So the goal of the trip was to get down to a famous iconic surfing spot in South America. The name of the place is called Puerto de Lobos. And arriving there in the morning definitely set the stage for a difficult day. You know, there were 20 of the top pro surfers out there, 10 to 15 foot waves, uh, not much wind. And uh, it was either going to be a great day or going home crying. Even though it was looking really light, we decided we should just go out there and sit there with our gear rigged up because, uh, you know, if the wind came up, even just for half an hour or an hour, uh, we didn't want to be messing around. So we went out there, we rigged up all of our stuff and just sat there in the lineup watching the guys get waves. There's a lot of top surfers out there. There was uh, Ramon Navarro, he's like the most famous uh, big wave surfer from Chile. And he was sitting there in the lineup. He was super cool, actually. Um, just when I sailed up next to him and just asked me if I had a life jacket on and stuff. So it was nice to have some support from those guys. And then they let me have my first wave. I just caught it right next to them. And then that kind of set the scene for, for a pretty good day after that. <laughs> Arriving into the lineup and waiting for like 20 minutes, I could see right then and there I was going to have some problems on that board trying to catch waves. Yeah, the wind was really light and Jason didn't have a big enough board. He borrowed my 88 litre, but I had 100 litre, so uh, I was definitely had the advantage there. So we finally got in the water when the wind maybe came up to like five to eight knots and right off the bat, Robbie started getting bomb waves. It was pretty quick for me to get my first wave because I had that massive board, it was really floaty. And then I got one more big bomb set after that as well. And I could see then Jason's eyes starting looking towards my board a little bit. I started looking over him at the lineup and saying to him, hey mate, you know, maybe I should borrow that 100 litre board to get a couple of waves. I could see he wanted the 100. He kept looking at it every time I sailed past. Yeah, we sort of made eye contact, but he was sort of trying to avoid me in the lineup. Because uh, I, I think he knew that I wanted to snag his board to try and get a few waves. I was trying to like come back on the jet ski and, and miss him each time and not get too close to him. First time that I actually did get next to him, he already kind of hinted about the board. Oh, it would be better if I had a 100 litre board. So just when I finally got his attention in the water from yelling and screaming at him, um, a kind of bomb set came through. And then this massive set came through and uh, he was in the perfect position on uh, my smaller board. You know, I, I managed to get one really nice one and unfortunately when I jived off the wave. But the one behind was massive and I kind of knew that maybe there was going to be a, a little bit of a window of opportunity for me to keep my board in. It broke all my equipment and was just left swimming there just wondering why I deserve this after flying for 26 hours. I was feeling bad for him but feeling good for me and keeping my board. I got to the beach and I was just running around frantically because it was about 5 p.m. at night. We had about an hour of light left and I had to get back out there and, and get the job done. I was feeling sorry for my poor friend Martin, knowing that he was just going to be screaming at him to get him back out there. It was pretty funny actually, I was, I was screaming at this guy who was helping us out that didn't really understand English. I think they had a bit of a funny time of Jason like trying to drive the ski and then getting even more wiped out because he wanted to get out there so bad that he tried to drive through too big of a white water and uh, yeah, so they, they ended up faffing around for quite a long time. I put the stuff on the jet ski and, and I jumped on the jet ski and drove it because I wanted to get out there in a real hurry and ended up going through a wave and wiping both of us off the ski again and uh, lost the equipment again there for a little bit. When he got back out, he was so pissed. I was like, oh, I was about to give him my board out of, just because I didn't want him to be angry with me. <laughs> but in the end, the wind picked up a lot and actually uh, it was fine. And we ended up both getting a lot of waves, sharing some waves. Eventually I got out there and uh, the wind came up right before sunset and I got a few good ones.
So all in all, it was a great successful trip. You know, we had great times, great towing, good windsurfing. You know, we got to sail uh, a place that had never been windsurfed before. Uh, the food was amazing down at Hotel Sarasu every night. We just ate like kings. And I recommend that if any of you guys, you know, come down this way, come and check that spot out. And uh, I'll be back again for sure next year or whenever there's another big swell. Chile is definitely a place that has uh, big, powerful waves, great surfing, great people and uh, good times.